In this lesson, we look at Charles's law. Charles's law is the answer to the question, how does the temperature of a gas affect its volume? So we're going to alter temperature and measure the associated volume. To do this in a fair way, we have to keep the other variables, pressure and amount of gas, constant. Now, we actually already know the answer from everyday life. We know that when things are warmer, they expand. Cooler things contract. For example, you should know that as you walk a lot, your feet get hotter and hotter and then they swell and then your shoes feel tighter. So we know that as temperature increases, volume increases. Is this direct proportion? We need some data to find out. If it is direct proportion, then as temperature increases, volume will increase by the same factor. Remember that we've already seen that temperature must be measured in the unit Kelvin, the SI unit Kelvin, because that is direct proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Here is some actual data from a laboratory experiment where temperature was altered and the corresponding volume was measured. We can see that as temperature increases, volume increases as well. Is this by the same factor? Well, we could actually work through it manually with proportion. Another way to see whether there is direct proportion is to see if one value divided by the other gives a constant. So here we have volume divided by temperature. Remember this is real data, so there is some experimental error. So it's not surprising that there is a little bit of difference between these values, but it does suggest that volume divided by temperature, if there were no experimental error, would give a constant. In other words, that volume is directly proportional to temperature. So V1 over T1 will equal a constant, and so will V2 over T2. So they equal one another. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And we can use this equation to solve for unknowns. Let's do that. So what would the volume reading be at a temperature of 90 degrees Celsius? First step, we need to convert that 90 degrees Celsius into Kelvin because temperature and volume are only directly proportional when temperature is measured in the SI unit Kelvin. We add 273, we get 363. We use the equation. This is using proportion, so we must have a question state and a comparison state. It doesn't matter which line of data we use as our comparison state. Although in this case, because it's real data, it's not idealized data, we will act get a bit of a different answer depending on which we use as a comparison state. Let's use line 4 as our comparison state, so we call its values T1 and V1. Line 5, of course, is our question state, T2, and the unknown value is V2. We substitute values into the equation, cross-multiply, and solve for V2. Our answer is 42,64 centimeters cubed. How do we know that the unit is centimeters cubed? Because V1's unit was centimeters cubed. And in this equation, V1 and V2 must have the same unit as one another, and T1 and T2 must both be in Kelvin. So how does the temperature of a gas affect its volume? The volume of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin. And this is Charles's law. Of course, this is only true if the other variables, pressure and amount of gas are constant. Let's put the statement into an equation. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. Whenever two variables are directly proportional to one another, a graph of one against the other gives a straight line. These two lines are both straight lines, showing that volume and temperature are directly proportional to one another. How do these two lines compare with one another? They were plotted from different data, but in each case, the amount of particles and the pressure was kept constant, the temperature was varied, and then the volume measured and then the data was plotted. But how did the two experiments differ so that their data, when plotted, gave these two different lines, one with a shallower gradient and one with a steeper gradient? To understand that, let's look at a certain temperature and compare the pink and the blue lines and see what that data tells us. So we can see at the certain temperature, the blue line data has a greater volume than the pink line data. 
So why should that be? That's because in the blue line data, more gas was trapped. And so at a certain temperature, it took up more volume than in the pink experiment at the same temperature took up volume. And that takes us to the last variable, the amount of gas and its influence. And we'll speak more about that in another video.